Hello and welcome to this episode of Range Woodworking, where today this beautiful slab of air-dried camphor laurel will be transformed into a number of awesome live edge timber coat racks. Now this is my first foray into working with slabs, but if there's one thing I know, it's that preparation is everything. So for me, the first step is to remove as much of the bark by hand and then recruit a chisel for the more stubborn stuff. And on this slab, apparently all of the bark feels like being stubborn, so I'll make my way around removing it all and trying not to damage the timber. Then, in an effort to preserve the natural shapes and grooves of the edge of the timber, I use a combination of this abrasive disc and these nylon abrasive brushes. These help preserve the natural valleys and grooves, which keeps it as close to its natural shape as possible. They do, however, take a bit of wrangling and make a huge mess. Unfortunately, the grain and bark on this camphor laurel is pretty gnarly and interlocked, so in some places they sort of merge into these ugly bark inclusions. A medium cut saw disc on an angle grinder removes this pretty quickly, and I'll just work my way along and then take an exceptionally long time to work out I need the handle on the other side. Once that's where I want it, I think it's time to blow all the dust off me and go for a long shower. Now the next morning I sand the edge all over and smooth everything out. For me, the easiest way to break this slab up into multiple pieces is to use my track saw to rip it up the middle. Then I'll take these pieces and roughly cross cut them in half with a jigsaw due to the limited space in my workshop. Whilst everything is rough, it's probably a good time to flatten one side of each piece to take any rock out. There are a few ways you could do this. A jointer would be quick and simple. A jointer sled for the thicknesser would also work. Except in my case, the drive belt for my thicknesser decided to shred itself the day before I got to this point. So I'm gonna have to use my adjustable router sled to flatten one side. I'll put a link to my video making this sled in the description below. Once all set up, I stabilize any rock or wobble with hot glue and these plastic shims so that when I run the router over, it creates one flat surface and once again, a heap of mess. Oh, and there's a quick reminder to run a metal detector over any slabs or recycled timber because there was a sneaky nail or something I wasn't expecting in this one. All good though, no damage to the router bit, and I was wearing my dark undies that day. Once the new drive belt had arrived and I'd installed it, the thickness was back in action and I could take these to their final thickness. And at their final thickness, I trim off the messy and checked ends using a mitre gauge at the table saw. Now I quite like the angle on the end of this piece, so I've decided to use my bevel gauge to record the angle and then adjust my mitre gauge so I can trim it back. And most importantly, I remember to scoot the fence on the mitre gauge away so I don't damage it on the saw blade. Okay, so the next step is a bit more slab prep. I use these bamboo skewers to try clear out all of these little bug tunnels. Some other YouTubers will use dental picks and similar specialist tools for this, but I only have these bamboo skewers. I tend to do more barbecuing than dentistry. Now it's my understanding that these bug tunnels tend to be pretty common in air dried slabs, but at the end of the day, the soft stuff that they leave behind won't be stable or take finish or anything, so we've got to get it out. Once they're tidied up and a quick hot glue perimeter can act as a dam, I'll use epoxy just to quickly fill them. A couple of chilly days later, the epoxy is finally set and I'm gonna use a chisel to pare back the extra stuff. Some will just sand it back, but I don't want to create an uneven surface where the sander sort of flexes around it. Another option could be a card scraper or a block plane, but I don't like getting the glue and epoxy all over the sole of my block plane.
Okay, now we're making progress. I'll quickly sand, sand, and sand again. A quick wipe down with terps or mineral spirits depending on your hemisphere, and it's time to apply finish. Now, I was going to use a different hard wax oil, but I forgot that this was YouTube, so I busted out the Rubio Monocoat in Pure, mixed up the 3 to 1 ratio, and got to rubbing. For anyone not familiar, this is a two component hard wax oil and accelerator mix. Once combined, they're applied and rubbed into the grain of the timber with a white Scotch Brite pad for 10 to 15 minutes. And this could actually be the longest or shortest 10 to 15 minutes of your life, depending on the size of your project and your application ambition. Then I remove the excess with paper towels and give it my best buff with a microfiber cloth. Okay, so the Rubio has had a chance to cure overnight and we're pretty much on the home stretch here. Now, before I go ahead and attach all the coat hooks, I'm gonna route some recesses in the back using one of these keyhole router bits um, in my plunge router here. I've created this highly sophisticated jig featuring two fences and a stop, um, which will allow me to ensure that all of my keyholes are the same shape and size. So I'll get these measured and marked and route it out. Okay, I mean, you heard my non voiceover bit. I'll measure a mark for my keyholes and then set the depth of my bit to make sure I get enough grab when finished. I'll position that highly sophisticated jig and clamp it in place and then spin her up. I'll quickly show you how I mount these things with these keyhole mounting points. It's as easy as a line of tape sketching over the top, and then you can move the tape to wherever you plan to mount this. Drive in a couple of screws and call it good. It's super easy, super quick, and gives a nice flush finish. Okay, now it's the home home stretch. I simply measure a mark to lay out these awesome hooks the customer supplied. Drill some pilot holes and fix them in place using screws from my high-tech spray painting station. And then it's time to install it. I'll use that same tape method to lay out on a wall and a level to keep it level. A couple of wall plugs and screws and it's good to go. I think we'll call that one good there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking and or subscribing. Until next time, take it easy.